All right, I know some people love pre-reading and that's how they've always gone through school, but I'm gonna tell you the five reasons why I don't do it. I don't do it. <laughs> it just hasn't worked for me. Okay, so let's cover the one benefit, because when I have done pre-reading, usually I'll do it before the term starts, like I'll pre-read whatever lecture. The best reason is that it can get you ahead. Okay, and then when you go to the lecture, at this point, you've already seen the material, so you can like kind of sit there and relax and just listen in and any added benefit, you can just add to the information that you've already kind of um, consolidated on your own. Okay, but I'm gonna list off the five reasons why I don't think it works for me, why I don't think it really works and you need to just be aware of these problems with pre-reading, okay? So, we're gonna count down. Number five, it's very time consuming. <laughs> uh, I noticed that it took me about the same time to pre-read as it did post-read, but I still had to do a little bit of post-reading. So in total, I was doing more time. So instead of just watching the lecture, watching the lecture and then just going through all that material, it was taking me about the same time or maybe even a little more, okay? So that's one thing to consider. That was me personally, it might be faster, who knows, but that was me. I like to comb through every detail and uh, it took me a little bit more time. So number four, and this is something very important to be aware of, is that not every teacher makes their lecture slides complete. Some of these have missing pieces of information, okay? Or like there's some animation that's missing that'll fill in those pieces. Whatever the point that they're trying to make in the lecture slide is more just an outline for them so they have something to go off of. Uh, not every teacher, some teachers, the lecture slide is exactly what they're gonna say. But some teachers, they freestyle. I know some teachers that freestyle off of whatever lecture slide they're on, and that's how they teach, okay? So you just need to be aware of that. When you're reading those kind of teachers' lecture slides, you need to know that you're not getting the whole picture. All right, that's number four. Number three is that the teacher may explain the material much better than you're trying to understand it in written word, okay? Some teachers are excellent at explaining material. Not all of them, not all of them, but <laughs> some teachers are excellent. They're so eloquent, they can just explain the information in such a synthesized manner that you don't really need to read that mess of a slide. Sometimes they're messes. It's just a fat list of all this, it's like paragraphs of describing something and it doesn't really make sense. But then the teacher can like just explain it in such a nice way that you that it, all that stuff makes sense instantly. So not all the teachers are like that. Some are very bad <laughs> with their ability to explain through verbal uh, reasoning. But um, uh, I, some are very good, and you should use that to your advantage when you're trying to write really good notes. Okay. Point number two. One of the top reasons is that teachers can make your life easier by telling you what they want specifically. Okay, so sometimes they'll have this huge list of stuff and if you look at the lecture slide, you're like, oh my God, I need to know all this. Well, <laughs> sometimes they say, oh, this is just background information. You actually don't need to know this for my exam. This is just something we would like you, you know, just, just look at it. It's interesting. It doesn't say that in a lecture slide. It doesn't say that it's interesting and that you don't need to know it. It's in there and if you just go in and take notes on it, you're wasting all your time you know, unfortunately, on material that it, it may add to your knowledge base, but you, you in, in, in the long run, don't really need it, okay? You've just spent maybe half the hour going through some material you didn't really need. And then, more specifically, they can tell you what you do need to know, okay? So you have a huge list and they'll say, okay, anything in red or this red box or anything in green, I want you to pick up on that. That's this. They'll, they'll explain what those, those colors or any like change in topic and they'll really make it clear. They're like, we, you do need to know this thing. And that's a big fatty hint that it might show up on the exam or it might be a wrong answer and you need to know it to distinguish it from the right, correct answer. <laughs> so it could save you a bunch of time in the long run, okay? All right, now, number one, the number, numero uno reason why I don't pre-read <clears throat> is because, this is, the, this is the number one reason, is that I can learn the material incorrectly. All right, 
that is the worst situation to be in. You've made Anki cards, you've like, you, you've, you've gone through the whole lecture, you're feeling so good about yourself, and then come, the, come lecture, you realize that what was written, what you thought you read, was totally not what, <laughs> what was trying to be taught, okay? You need to make sure to learn it correctly. Because the other thing is, once you learn something incorrectly, it's hard to unlearn it, okay? So learn it correctly the first time. It's huge, because then you're, it's stuck in your brain. Okay, if you learn it incorrectly, it's hard to unlearn that. So that's a big one. And I've noticed myself, especially when I pre-read, uh, that has happened. I'm like, whoa, 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 I didn't understand that. Okay, so those are my five reasons why I don't pre-read. I'm not saying that it's bad. If you do it, you do well, keep doing it. You know, it, I think it depends on the person. For me, those are the reasons. But you probably are aware of those things. So, go out and keep kicking booty, guys. All right.